Holy God, open our eyes to your presence, open our ears to your call, open our hearts to your love. Amen. In the glimmering world of Hollywood, superheroes have graced our TV screens and ignited our excitement for decades. From the soaring flights of Superman to the enigmatic depth of Batman, and from the regal prowess of King Chala, aka the Black Panther, to the vivacious energy of Miss America, aka America Chavez, these characters embody the extraordinary abilities and unyielding determination that captivate our imagination. But our intrigue with the superheroes transcends the gates of Hollywood. Each of us can effortlessly name our personal real-world superheroes. Whether it's the visionary determination and conviction of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the athletic prowess of LeBron James, the groundbreaking innovation of Elon Musk, or the creative artistry of Taylor Swift, our culture beckons us to draw inspiration from these figures. And yet, amid the enthralling battles etched onto comic pages and the glitz of paparazzi cameras, a thought-provoking question might arise. What if? What if we shifted our focus beyond the famous and the powerful of the world, seeking our heroes in the unlikeliest corners of reality instead? What would our world look like if we were to acknowledge the heroes that dwell on the fringes of society, those who may not possess human, uh, superhuman abilities, but wield an incredible power to make a difference? Imagine a world where our attention shifts from box office hits to the stories of those whom society often overlooks. I often find myself endlessly captivated by the person of Jesus of Nazareth. Well, being a priest, not doing that would be a bit strange. He is certainly one of my superheroes, and there is an unshakable certainty in my heart that Jesus was a real man who truly walked the dusty paths of first century Palestine. He lived through the highs and lows, the heartaches, laughter, and pain that mark human experience. I can even imagine him as a child running through the streets with his friends, and yes, even driving his parents mad with his youthful experience. After all, once they lost him for three days in the temple. I'm not quite sure what that says about Mary and Joseph, but that's beside the point. Jesus of Nazareth was a real, fully human. Yet Jesus also transcends the ordinary in a way that sets him apart as the most remarkable person to have ever walked this planet. The spark he ignited in those who encountered him continues to blaze through the millennia, the ripple effect of his life and ministry culminating in his sacrificial death on a Roman cross and his triumphant resurrection on that awe-filled third day morning is an undeniable force that has reshaped the very course of history. So perhaps there is no bigger superhero than Jesus. You have heard me many times that Jesus, heard me say many times, that Jesus is the embodiment of love, mercy, kindness, and generosity. Jesus, the very Word of God, is the transformative force that continues to reshape societies and touch hearts in the most profoundly remarkable and personal ways. Each time 
I get to stand here before you preaching God's Word, I feel proud that I can talk to you about that man who gave his life for his friends, who healed the sick, touched the lepers, sat to dinner with sinners and outcasts, and was always ready to hear other people's stories and simply invite them onto a life's journey together. But this is the very same Jesus of Nazareth whose attitude and language in this encounter with the Canaanite woman, otherwise referred to as the Syrophoenician woman, is shocking. This passage presents a formidable challenge that doesn't offer an easy escape route for Jesus. And I firmly believe that there is no necessity for us to shield Jesus from Jesus' own words. Over the ages, numerous commentators have attempted to soften the blow and explain Jesus away. Some say that perhaps she caught him with his compassion down. Others suggest that Jesus never intended his words literally, suggesting that he employed them as a means to teach about the wideness of God's mercy. Yet I really appreciate the fact that right here and now, for once in his life, Jesus momentarily missed the mark. He behaved in ways that exposed his prejudice and ethnocentrism, which were common among first century Palestine Jews. He used inexcusable, dehumanizing language that should continue to resound painfully in our ears. I believe that Jesus, the eternal Word of God, in order to reveal and disclose God to us, accepted our full humanity. God in Christ emptied God's self of God's divine attributes to enable Jesus to become fully human. From that moment in history, the one who is immutable, the omnipotent, the omniscient, now also knows even our human pain, a state of imperfection that is otherwise foreign to God. Despite his divine nature, he existed as a Palestinian man, intricately woven into the fabric of his era, a man constrained by the received knowledge, mores, and science of the day. Finally, a man living in an environment that despised the Canaanites. And here lies the essential beauty of this story, as it invites us to seek the superheroes, not among the disciples, not even Jesus, but on the margins of society. Picture a woman a mother whose desperation for mercy for her troubled child drives her to defy every conceivable boundary. Those boundaries, whether stemming from ethnicity, religion, heritage, or gender, lose all significance to her in the face of her relentless pursuit. The norms that expected, to, expected her to exhibit restraint and gentleness crumble as she raises her voice relentlessly, chasing after Jesus, even as he completely ignores her in silence. Now imagine a parent whom Jesus calls a dog, notably a racist slur. Yet astonishingly, she refrains from retaliation and begs for the crumbs from the table instead. What a testament to an unswavering faith that rests on the bedrock of her understanding of God's essence as one rooted in boundless mercy. Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, once wrote that the very goal of the creation of human beings is that they should be liberated to show God's glory by reflecting back to God God's own unqualified love and joy. That's exactly what she's doing right here, reflecting back to God, God's own unqualified joy and love. As a true superhero and star in this encounter, she's not prepared to waver in her faith, 
no matter how unideal un- her situation might be. She not only engages Jesus, but also challenges him, subtly urging him to consider the grander scope of God's plan beyond the confines of the Jewish people. From the margins of society emerges a superhero that Jesus was noticeably fascinated by. Woman, great is your faith, he said. How profoundly different our perspective might be if we found heroism in those whose stories go often unheard. Consider that Latino person we encounter each week, whether in a place of worship or a shop or on a bustling metro. The same person who undertook the perilous journey across the southern border through scorching deserts and the Rio Grande on four separate occasions before finally securing a place within our country's borders. What an unwavering spirit of conviction What an audacious dream to carve out a brighter future, not just for himself, but for those around him as well. Imagine imagine committing to an existence where living and laboring in a foreign land comes with the heart-wrenching stipulation that you can never return to your homeland, even when your loved ones pass away, all to provide for those who are thousands of miles away. How different would our world and our church be if our superheroes were no longer the lofty figures um, adorned in grandeur with mitres or seated in high chairs of power within majestic sunstone and alabaster buildings. Instead, if 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 our heroes were the unsung champions working in the shadows moved by a love so selfless that recognition is not their goal, how much richer our understanding of leadership would become. How different would a world be if our heroes were not those endowed with extraordinary abilities to bear their burdens alone and overcome all challenges independently? Imagine if our superheroes were the ones who continue to remind us of our interdependence, those who possess the courage to reveal their vulnerabilities, acknowledging when they need help. How different would our world be if our next superhero was a young person wrestling with their gender and sexual identity, still questioning, often unsure, But even in the midst of that, they continue to trust in the deep, resounding voice that propels them forward. What an invaluable lesson on the power of authenticity. The majority of those individuals will likely never bask in the glow of the spotlight. They often find comfort in the shadows, evading in any form of public acclaim. In some instances, they might even retreat from the public gaze altogether. Yet a shared trade binds those unsung heroes of ordinary existence. They embody extraordinary abilities, deep love for others, and unyielding determination that possess the innate power to captivate our imagination. These qualities are within our reach if only we choose to seek them out. Our Jewish siblings declare faith in a learning God, a divine force that evolves through interaction with humanity, a concept that beautifully mirrors the quandary we encounter in Jesus' action within today's gospel. If the faith of the Syrophoenician woman was strong enough to elicit growth even from Jesus, then what revelations might we unearth if our ears remain open to the symphony of superhero voices coming from the margins? Amen.